continuation of the previous lecture so where we were discussing uh, projective and quasi projective varieties. So uh, the last thing that we saw was that uh, if you have a projective variety then there are no uh, non constant global regular functions and uh, as corollaries we saw that the only morphisms from a, from a projective variety to an affine variety are the constant maps and uh, putting the condition of projectiveness and affineness on a variety uh, reduces it to a point. These are all just reflections of the fact that there are no uh, non-constant global regular functions on a projective variety, okay? And uh, uh, therefore, uh, you know, uh, one thought of uh, uh, one line of thought from this is that if you if you still be if one still goes by the philosophy of Felix Klein that the geometry of a space is controlled by the functions on it, then it's very clear that the geometry of a projective variety cannot be controlled by uh, just looking at the global regular functions because there are not any non constant of global regular functions and therefore you will have to concentrate on regular functions on open subsets of the projective variety and this leads to uh, what is called as uh, uh, birational geometry and uh, that is studying the geometry of open subsets okay and therefore the clue is that uh, uh, if you if you cannot uh, keep track of the geometry of the projective variety by looking at its global regular functions which are only constants you can still keep track of the geometry of the projective variety by looking at regular functions on various open sets okay and this is uh, uh, this is covered uh, uh, in by studying sections of line bundles uh, on a proje on a projective variety and this is something that you would see in a second course in algebraic geometry okay so uh, so, so I am just trying to say that the statement of Felix Klein, the philosophy of Felix Klein that the geometry of is controlled by the functions still applies in the also in the case of the projective variety only thing is that you it is not enough to just consider global functions because they are only constants you have to consider functions on open sets okay and, and the device that uh, attaches which keeps track attaches to every open set the regular functions on that open set is what is called the sheaf of regular functions. So you one needs to keep track of this using sheaf theory, right? Uh, which most probably you would see in a second course in algebraic geometry. So uh, now what I want to do, I want to uh, 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 I just want to continue uh, saying the following that uh, uh, so basically, you know, uh, I want to go back to the to our earlier argument where uh, uh, in I think uh, a couple of lectures ago where I showed that uh, the affine space the projective n space was uh, uh, a union of n plus 1 copies of affine n space. So you know if so let us recall that so you see we have uh, so we have we have projective n space and uh, we of course take the homogeneous coordinate ring for the projective n space as uh, uh, k x naught through x n 
and uh, these x i's are co they are the coordinates on the affine space above the projective space. So, you must remember that there is a there is an a n plus 1 minus the origin of which the projective space is a quotient by this quotient map which is quotient by the equivalence relation that identifies all points on a line passing through the origin in the affine space above and uh, the coordinates here are the uh, x i's and the corresponding coordinates here are called homogeneous coordinates because here only the ratios are the coordinates are ratios and uh, uh, now you look at the you look at the set u i where u i is uh, the projective space minus the 0 set of x i in the projective space. Notice that each x i is uh, homogeneous of degree 1 uh, therefore its 0 set is a uh, closed subset of uh, projective space uh, it is called a hyperplane because it corresponds to the ith coordinate being 0 uh, and uh, its complement is this open set u i uh, this consists of all points with homogeneous coordinates with ith uh, with with the subscript i uh, coordinate non zero okay and then i told you that there is a uh, there is a map phi i uh, from an uh, to ui and uh, uh, i would ask one of you to check whether phi i was defined in this direction in this direction or the other uh, was this the map phi i or, or was it the other way around okay so it was the other way around so let me so that I stick to the notation I started with earlier and this map was very simple what you did was you took a point with coordinates lambda naught etc lambda n and simply send it to the point lambda not by lambda 1 lambda i dot 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 lambda n by lambda i where of course omit lambda i by lambda i okay. So this is the map we defined and we checked uh, it is easy to check that this map is a bijective map okay and I asked you to check that this map is actually a, a homeomorphism of topological spaces uh, and uh, uh, so uh, so you know uh, so what I want to say now is that suppose I start with uh, the topology on the projective space given by the quotient topology for this map with the topology above being this one induced by the Zariski topology on affine space then this topology uh, with p n with that uh, topology will induce a topology on the u i and for that topology phi i is a homeomorphism with a n with a n having the usual Zariski topology. So, uh, uh, so the, the way this is interpreted is that uh, if you want to give the topology on pn there are three ways of doing it one is you define the closed sets as zero sets of uh, uh, a bunch of homogeneous polynomials uh, then uh, the other way is by giving the pn the quotient topology via this quotient map the third way is that you make each of the phi i's homeomorphism namely you transport on the you give the topology on ui that makes this a homeomorphism namely a set here is open or closed if and only if its image here is open or closed and then uh, these topologies on the individual ui's will agree well on the intersections and therefore they will give define a global topology on the projective space and that will be the same as the quotient topology or the topology for which closed sets are given by zero sets of a uh, bunch of homogeneous polynomials okay. So all these are the same so uh, to you know uh, now to make things more uh, clearer uh, in fact what I want to say is that these phi i are not uh, they are not just homeomorphisms these phi i's are actually isomorphisms of varieties okay. So fact uh, each phi i each phi i is an isomorphism of varieties. And 
ah yeah okay this is not equal I am sorry this should be a subset of P n here okay. Is, is that a topology generated by all or this one? Is EQI will have a topology now? Yes. Because of these maps. Correct. Now to give a topology on PN using these, mm -hmm. you mean that is a topology generated by all these? Yeah, you can. So it's a fact. You can take the topology generated by this, or uh, so. Okay. So thank you for pointing out. This should have been uh, subset, not equal to, of course. So when I said that uh, uh, that there is a topology on each UI that makes PI a homeomorphism, and then you all these topologies put together give a topology on PN. I mean the following thing. A subset of Pn is defined to be closed or open if its intersection with each ui is respectively closed or open. That is the definition. And for this definition to work, uh, a subset of uh, ui intersection uj uh, is closed in ui only if and only if it is closed in uj, and is open in ui if and only if it is open in uj. That is the compatibility that you will have to check. So, the topology on Pn that I want to give by gluing the topologies on the ui is the following you define a subset of pn to be closed respectively open if its intersection with this cover is uh, closed respectively open in particular these uis themselves uh, will become uh, open because if you take the set ui uh, uh, you will have to check that ui intersection uj is open in uj okay for every j different from i and ui intersection ui is ui and that is of course open in ui so each of the uis by this definition will automatically become open subsets and then uh, you are only requiring that uh, uh, a subset of the ambient space is closed respectively open open if and only if that if it is if its intersection with respect to this cover is uh, relatively closed or relatively open so that's the topology that you can get by gluing uh, the topologies on each ui okay now the fact i want to make is that each phi is an isomorphism of varieties all right and uh, how does one do this uh, you will you will have to show that phi e you have to show that phi i is a morphism you have to show that phi i inverse is a morphism. So, uh, so, so let me let me do that properly so what we will do is uh, uh, so on the so we will have to uh, you know what I am trying to say is that the phi i's are isomorphisms so I am trying to say that each ui is isomorphic to an but of course every each of the u each of these uis is a quasi affine variety because it's an open subset of a projective variety okay so uh, sorry quasi, quasi projective variety because it's an open subset of a projective variety okay and i'm just saying that these quasi projective varieties are actually affine because they are isomorphic to affine these affine uh, varieties namely i'm just saying that this natural open cover of quasi projective vari uh, varieties is actually isomorphic to uh, uh, so many copies of a fine space okay and then uh, so you know uh, so the the way to check it is that uh, you do the following thing you use this lemma which I have stated earlier the lemma is uh, a, a map zeta from uh, x to uh, y where x is any variety and y is an affine variety uh, in say a n in a m with coordinates with coordinate functions. x1 or let me put t1 etc tm is a morphism if and only if it pulls back 
each coordinate function t i to a regular function on x ok. So, so this is a fact that we already seen I mean we saw this in the context of uh, affine varieties or quasi affine varieties but it you can go and check that the proof has got nothing to do with the, the source variety being affine or quasi affine it could have very well been projective or quasi projective. So the idea is if you are just given a set theoretic map ok when do you check its homomorphism uh, I mean how do you check its homomorphism when is it a morphism it is a very very important it is a very powerful lemma but it is very easy ok and it is very easy to use the proof is also easy but it is a very powerful lemma because if you want to check something is a morphism you have to check two things you will have to check it is continuous number one then you have to check that it pulls back regular functions to regular functions so checking involves two steps but this lemma tells you that you can uh, you can you know uh, do away with that and do it in one go by just simply saying that if your target is an affine variety ok and your more and your map pulls back uh, coordinate functions to regular functions then it is a morphism ok. So if you use this lemma it is very clear that it is very easy to see that phi i and phi i inverse homomorphisms and since they are inverses set theoretic inverses of each other it will follow that phi i is an isomorphism ok. So uh, uh, you know uh, so you know if for so for example if you try to apply it uh, so I try to apply this lemma to phi i my source variety is u i uh, which is a quasi projective variety and the target variety is an affine variety is just affine space ok and you know if I take uh, uh, so if I if I take a, a coordinate uh, function on this and compose with this what I will just get so for example suppose I take the first coordinate function the first coordinate function will be uh, if I take the uh, if I take the coordinates here as t1 through tn ok then if I composed uh, let us say t1 with phi i I will simply get uh, this uh, x0 through xn uh, homogeneous coordinates going to x0 by xi ok and uh, if I compose it with tj it will be just this x0 through xn going to xj by xi and xj by xi is of course a regular function on the source projective space x, x because it is a quotient of two homogeneous polynomials of the same degree degree 1 and it is defined on the set I am dividing by xi is correct because I am on ui where xi is not 0 therefore it is very trivial to see that uh, the pullback of uh, the coordinate functions are regular functions. So that makes phi a morphism all right and similarly if you go in this direction also uh, ok. So you can go in one direction because uh, 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 this is uh, uh, this is a fine and this is uh, this is any variety ok. So for showing that the uh, map is a morphism in the other direction I uh, will need to do something more. So, so let me write this down. Uh, let me write that down. So, proof of fact uh, let uh, T one, etc. T n be coordinate the coordinates on coordinate functions uh, on the target a n uh, then if I look at the pullback then their pullbacks uh, by phi i are the functions uh, well t not by uh, 
transforming x naught by x i x 1 by x i and x n by x i omitting x i by x i okay, which are which are regular on u i therefore by the lemma each phi i is a morphism. So phi i is a morphism by the lemma okay. Now uh, uh, so so what this will tell you is that phi i is a uh, bijective bicontinuous morphism but even that is not enough to ensure that phi i is an isomorphism because uh, in the category of varieties the problem is that you can have a you can have a bijective map which is a morphism in one direction it could even be continuous in the other direction but it may fail to be a morphism in the other direction so you will have to do something to say that phi i inverse is also a morphism okay and uh, and for that uh, uh of course uh, to check that phi i inverse is a morphism I cannot apply this lemma because the target now is uh, ui and I do not know for sure that ui is an affine variety to, to start with I do not know that ui is an affine variety it is only a quasi projective variety I cannot apply the lemma to show that phi i inverse is a morphism. So I will have to prove to prove phi i inverse is a morphism I will have to do it the hard way namely I have to check it is continuous and then I have to check that it is. Uh, 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 it pulls back regular functions to regular functions. Now continuity is something uh, that I have already asked you to check but it is probably uh, uh, easy to write down. So uh, uh, phi i uh, inverse is a morphism that phi i inverse is a morphism uh, needs to be done needs to be shown. Uh, cannot use the lemma because the target is ui and I do not know ui is affine but of course once I prove this fact uh, it will follow that ui is isomorphic to an affine variety and therefore ui will become affine but I cannot assume it when I try to prove it okay. So uh, so phi i inverse is continuous uh, is continuous because you know how will I how will I show that it is continuous so you know uh, I start with uh, to show it is continuous I have to show that if I take a close set here uh, it is inverse image under phi i inverse which is the same as it is image under phi i it is a closed set uh, in an so I will just have to show that phi i is a closed map or an open map okay so because phi i is a closed map equivalently open map and why is phi i why is phi i a closed map the, the idea is very simple if you take a closed subset here okay uh, that closed subset is uh, the closed subset in the projective space intersect with ui because that is the uh, induced topology now since it is a close uh, if you take its closure in if you take a closed subset here and take its closure in the projective space you will get a closure you get a close subset of projective space so it is the zero set of a homogeneous ideal okay now what you do is you take uh, uh, you take all those uh, elements in the homogeneous ideal and then just uh, uh, dehomogenize them in terms of these coordinates okay you will get an ideal here and it is the zero set of this ideal which is the image of that closed set okay so let me write this down so what you must understand is uh, okay so this that gives me an opportunity to say something uh, what is the algebraic translation of this uh, of this morphism the algebraic translation is of course the algebraic part here is the uh, ring of uh, it is a polynomial ring it is the ring of regular functions on an is is the polynomials in t1 etc tn okay and what is happening here uh, the 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 fact is the regular functions here are just the it is just this polynomial ring localized at xi 
okay that means you invert x i uh, but then after you invert x i it it is it is still graded okay because you have inverted a homogeneous element and then you take this degree 0 part of that that will give you a sub ring and that is the uh, ring of regular functions of u1 okay. So uh, the fact is that uh, this map induces an isomorphism of these rings and that is the geometric translation uh, that is the algebraic translation of the fact that this map is a is an isomorphism of varieties okay. So let me let me explain that. So what you do is <coughs> uh, let uh, let f in u uh, ui be closed be a closed set. So f bar in Pn in it is the this the ambient projective space in which u i is sitting. Uh, is closed uh, which means uh, f bar is the 0 set in Pn of I here homogeneous ideal okay and now what you do is that uh, uh, So you know take uh, define a map from the fine coordinate ring of A n uh, which is k t1 etc t n to uh, to the to the set of homogeneous elements in H this is just union of S D D greater than or equal to 0 and what is this map uh, so this map here is homogenization so this is the homogenization map and what is the homogenization map if you give me a polynomial in T1 etc Tn okay then this polynomial in T1 etc Tn has a uh, certainly it has a maximal degree okay now what you but this has only n variables so what you do is that you homogenize it namely you make every monomial equal uh, you make the degree of every monomial appearing in this polynomial to be equal to this highest degree by adding as many uh, 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 you know uh, the required power of a new variable okay and that is a new homogenizing variable that you introduce okay and uh, so the so the homogenization is i put uh, x i power degree f uh, f of uh, uh, x not by x i and so on x n by x i okay this is the homogenization process so what you do is that uh, if, if you do it like this you must you must realize that uh, when I write f of when I plug in for t1 through tn the x0 by xi x1 by xi and so on up to xn by xi of course omitting xi by xi okay then I will get a polynomial which will have the xi in the denominator okay I will get a polynomial in the x x i by x j I mean uh, rather polynomial in the x j by x i where j varies and i is fixed but then by multiplying it by x i to the degree f I clear all the denominators okay. So what you must understand is that this polynomial is an homogeneous polynomial of degree equal to degree of f okay. So this method this is called homogenization alright and there is a map uh, there is a map like in this direction 
which is called dehomogenization. So, so there is a map called dehomogenization. Uh, and that is uh, that is that is very simple you give me a polynomial g x0 etc xn and I do the obvious thing I simply send it to g x0 etc g t0 I mean g t1 etc uh, I put 1 where I have uh, uh, where I have p i then I put T n okay. So, this is called dehomogenization. So, what you do is there are these variables x naught through x n okay. Now, for x i you put 1 okay. If you put 1 for the x i then uh, you get the remaining polynomial is only a polynomial in x naught through x n without x i. So, it is only n variables and these for these n variables you put 3 T 1 through T n in that order okay this is called dehomogenization and the uh, fact is that let me call this as f sub h uh, the subscript h being being uh, homogenization and let me call this as g sub d h which means the dehomogenization okay instead of giving names to these maps. So, any f uh, which is a polynomial in the t i's uh, is homogenized to give an f h which is a homogeneous polynomial in the x i's conversely you start with the homogeneous polynomial in the xi's you can dehomogenize it uh, to give g sub dh is uh, uh, inhomogeneous polynomial not necessarily homogeneous polynomial in the ti's okay. So, uh, so you have this map and the reason I want uh, the reason I uh, have this map is because you can now check it is a it is a very simple uh, set theoretic exercise to check that you know if you take if you take uh, if you take if you so I have now see I, I am trying to check that this map uh, phi i is closed okay. So, I started with an f which is closed here and I took its closure uh, in the full space and this f closure is the 0 set of an ideal it is a homogeneous ideal. So, now what I am going to do is uh, I am simply going to take uh, since it is a homogeneous ideal it is generated by homogeneous elements all right. So, what I am going to do is I am going to take those homogeneous elements and I am going to just dehomogenize it okay. So, essentially what I am doing is uh, see the map is only from the homogeneous elements to the homogeneous elements. So, what you do is this ideal breaks up into direct sum of its homogeneous pieces and so the ideal is equal to i intersection s d direct sum of i intersection s d's and each i intersection s d is a subset here and I take its image there okay. So, i is direct sum i intersection s d d greater than equal to 0 this is because i is homogeneous okay and uh, uh, consider i d h which is definition is summation of i intersection s d see my mind you i intersection s d is this i intersection s d is sitting inside s d which is sub of s h so homogeneous elements and on s h I have this dehomogenization map okay. So, what I do is I simply take i intersection s d and I dehomogenize it okay and then I take the sum okay. Let me for safety take the ideal generated by that all right and uh, the the fact is so this bracket is supposed to mean ideal generated by this all right and the fact now is that uh, uh, the image of the image of this f under this phi i under this phi i is I have to verify it is a closed set and what is a closed set it is just the closed set of this ideal mind you this ideal is an ideal in uh, on the left side it is it is an ideal in a in in, in k t1 etcetera t n this is an ideal okay this is an ideal there and so it defines a closed set and the fact is what is that closed set that closed set is actually the image under f the image under phi of f. So, fact is z of i d h is equal to phi of f which shows that phi is closed okay phi i of f showing phi i phi i is closed.
and uh, since I have written down all this uh, it is also easy to say why phi i inverse is closed and phi i inverse is also closed is also easy to check in the same way what I will have to do is that which I will have to start with the closed set here and show its image under phi i inverse is a closed set there and what will I do it is very simple a closed set here is given by an ideal it is given by an ideal uh, in T1 etc Tn and then I take this ideal in T1 etc Tn and simply homogenize it I will get an ideal uh, I will get a homogeneous ideal and the 0 set of the that homogeneous ideal is going to give me a closed subset of Tn if I intersect it with Ui that is going to be the image of this closed set under phi i inverse and that is how you show check that check that phi i inverse is closed okay. So let me write that also uh, so th this this is something that you can check okay uh, so instead of saying fact I should say check similarly if z in so mind you this z is z this z is in an this z is a 0 set in an so similarly if z in an uh, of j uh, is a closed subset uh, is a closed subset uh, of an for an ideal j in k t1 etc tn then uh, phi i inverse of z a n k j is simply z of this z in p n of the homogenization of j which is j h okay this is the homogenization of this ideal and uh, uh, it is that intersection with u i showing phi i inverse closed that is phi i is continuous okay. So, uh, so once you understand this homogenization dehomogenization uh, you see clearly that uh, uh, that is what is going on at the uh, you know algebraic level in fact to be uh, to be more precise what is happening is that uh, you know uh, once uh, once this fact has been proved once this fact has been proved uh, what it is going to say is that ui is isomorphic to each ui is isomorphic to a and as an affine variety therefore you expect that the ring of regular functions on ui is the same as polynomial ring in n variables okay. So that should give you some isomorph ring isomorphism and you should have a uh, nice ring description here okay that also can be checked so uh, uh, but be, but before I do that uh, let me complete the proof of this fact uh, I needed to check that phi i is a inverse is a morphism I have already checked that phi i inverse is continuous I will have to only check that phi i inverse uh, pulls back regular functions to regular functions so uh, uh, it remains to show that uh, phi i inverse uh, pulls back regular functions to regular functions to regular functions and that would make phi i inverse a morphism and that together with the fact that phi i is a morphism will tell you that phi i is an isomorphism. So uh, what should I do so I have to show that uh, uh, this map pulls back regular functions to regular functions so I should take a regular function here uh, I should compose it with this map and show that the resulting function here is regular so that is also easily re that is also easily uh, written in terms of the dehomogenization map okay. Uh, so start with uh, with a uh, regular function uh, uh, let me make sure that I am not uh, messing up uh, some notation 
sort, sort of the regular function uh, g by h on uh, an open subset uh, of u i namely uh, uh, u i intersection projective space minus 0 set in projective space of h ok. So, you know a regular function uh, on a quasi projective variety or projective variety is just a quotient of homogeneous polynomials of the same degree. So, I start with the regular function g by h on an open subset of this ok uh, uh, where g h are homogeneous of the same degree say g comma h are in some degree d part ok d uh, of course I will assume uh, uh, now now what you have is uh, you look at so look at uh, then uh, phi i inverse uh, inverse of g by h ok. So, this is a rather uh, uh, confusing notation. So, you know I, I wanted to go back and look at this diagram phi i inverse is in this direction ok. My regular function g by h is here it is defined on this I compose it with phi i inverse ok then I get the pull back. So, uh, so this means this is simply this simply means that you first apply phi i inverse and then apply g by h uh, and um, and if you write it out uh, uh, is the function if you give me a point with coordinates t1 uh, t1 etcetera tn what I am supposed to do is I am supposed to apply phi i uh, I am supposed to apply phi i inverse to it. So, the point to which it will go is it is going to be uh, uh, t1 dot 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 1 tn this is these are the homogeneous coordinates where this one is in the ith position. this is the map which is this is the map which is phi i inverse ok. And then what I am going to do is I am I am I am going to apply uh, g by h to this ok. And so what I will get is I will get g of uh, t1 etcetera 1 uh, and tn by h of t1 1 tn ok this is what I will get. But then but what is g1 g of t1 uh, but g of t1 if i put g of t1 etc tn with 1 in the ith uh, t ith position then this is a dehomogenization of g high uh, uh, of of g so this is actually so what this tells you is that phi i inverse inverse of g mod h is nothing but the g dehomogenization of g by the de dehomogenization of h which is of course a uh, which is of course regular which is regular on on uh, 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 d of h d h. So, I am done. So, I am just saying that uh, I mean this is uh, if you write it down uh, it seems uh, a little complicated, but it is not it is quite straightforward. I am just saying that if you give me a regular function here which is a quotient of polynomials ok. If I pull it back the function that I get here is simply the same quotient of not the same polynomials, but the corresponding dehomogenized polynomials. But since it is again a quotient of polynomials it is a regular function on affine space because regular function on affine space is supposed to be defined by locally by a quotient of polynomials. So, 
uh, it is pulling back regular functions to phi inverse is certainly pulling, pulling ba back regular functions to regular functions and what is helping is uh, this, this, this language of homogenization and dehomogenization okay. So that completes the uh, that completes the proof of the fact of the fact that phi is an isomorphism okay. So uh, uh, so that completes the proof of this fact and then let me also uh, uh, let me also tell you uh, once this is done uh, so so let me add one line to this okay uh, uh, the pullback the pullback uh, uh, via phi i induces an isomorphism Uh, this is a k algebra isomorphism from the regular functions on u i which is the following you take you take this uh, this polynomial ring in n person variables the homogeneous coordinate ring of uh, a projective space you localize it you localize it at x i s sub x i is the localization of x i okay and then you take its degree 0 part okay see localizing x i means you are inverting x i. So any element in the localization will look like a polynomial by a power of x i now for such a polynomial uh, for, for such a quotient namely a polynomial by a power of x i you can define degree to be the degree of the numerator polynomial minus the degree of the power uh, the, the power minus the power of the xi that is occurring in the denominator with this degree definition you can check that the localization s sub xi is also a graded ring and you take its degree degree 0 part okay that will be a k algebra that k algebra is exactly this that is exactly the ring of regular functions on ui okay okay and uh, so in, a, in other words i am just saying the regular functions on this ui are simply uh, quotients of their they are globally given by quotients of polynomials with the numerator polynomial being a homogeneous polynomial the denominator polynomial being a power of x i whose power is equal to the degree homogeneous degree of the numerator polynomial. So the only uh, regular functions on this u i global regular functions are the form uh, g by x i power n uh, g by x i power t okay where t is the degree of g they are the only regular global regular functions on this and that is what you get when you take the uh, this this homogeneous coordinate ring localized at xi namely invert xi and then take the degree 0 part for the induced gradation okay and this will you will get an isomorphism of this k algebra with uh, the the affine coordinate ring of affine space this is what pull back pull back of regular functions uh, will induce an isomorphism from the ring of regular functions here to the ring of regular functions here okay and uh, that is described like this okay and you can check this you, you can check this state this equality okay uh, it involves a little bit of uh, uh, diligent checking uh, that the global regular functions on ui is given by this ring and uh, uh, you can also check that this map uh, this this map which is given by the pulling back of uh, uh, pull back of regular functions uh, from the uh, okay I think my my directions are uh, are wrong uh, if I want to use phi i then I must pull back regular functions from here to here so my directions are wrong so maybe what I should say is I should rather change this to phi i inverse or if I want to use phi i I should change this so let me change it. Uh, and and phi i induces a k algebra isomorphism from a of a n to the regular functions on ui which is uh, uh, s localized at x i and you take this degree 0 part so this is the uh, so the fact is uh, so so let me repeat it uh, 
not only is each phi i an isomorphism but once you know phi i is an isomorphism I am just saying that the variety u i which originally was a quasi projective variety is actually isomorphic to an affine variety because it is isomorphic to this a n it is in fact an affine space and you know that whenever you have an isomorphism of affine varieties it has to induce an isomorphism of the corresponding uh, regular functions and therefore this isomorphism by a by pull back should give me an isomorphism regular functions here to the regular functions here the regular functions here are just the uh, polynomials in n variables and the regular functions on u i are you can check exactly the homogeneous localization of this uh, this graded ring with respect to x i which means you localize with respect to x i and take the degree 0 part which means you are taking quotients of uh, quotients of the form homogeneous polynomial of certain degree by x i to the to that degree as a raised as a power okay and you will get an isomorphism like this right and uh, this map is also described in terms of homo this map and it is in it is inverse as you can check is also described in terms of homogenization and dehomogenization you can write it down right so with that I will stop. <coughs>